Sometimes as a creative, I have ideas and inspirations like coming out of my ears. And other times I find that I am quite stuck. So what do you do to navigate through that stuck to get through that creative block? Hi, I'm Alexis, a full-time artist here in New York City. On this channel, I share my art and inspirations and just daily life and thoughts on what it is to be a human at this point in our existence. If you're new here, welcome. And if that sounds like your kind of thing, I'd love it if you stuck around. I have found that over the past several months, I have been experiencing a tremendous creative block. And when I'm in those moments, what I find is that I just kind of stick to what I know. I go back to those projects of comfort, if you will. So I have been working on my collection, The Great Creating, and I've been processing a lot of ways that I want to move forward with this creative endeavor with Paper for the People. But I haven't actually done a whole lot of work with my hands, which is really where the satisfaction and fulfillment comes from. And so this week I really pushed myself to get it back out into just the world of creating. And I found a studio here in Brooklyn that offered a crochet class on how to make granny squares. And that's something that I've really been wanting to do. And I created the stencil for the great creating out of a quilt that my grand had quilted. But I always thought that it would be really helpful for me to actually do the actual crochet process and that it would better inform my great creating collection. And so I took a course and it was wonderful. And, and I've had a sketchbook here for four years and I have just been so precious with it. I did all of the things you're supposed to do to encourage you to like get into it. I put stickers on it and I bought all the markers and all the things. But I find that I'm really precious with art supplies because they're expensive. But that preciousness doesn't actually encourage growth and experimentation and breakthrough. I'm gonna get into this sketchbook finally. And I'd love to take you along as I work through some just like play and experimentation with some gouache. And I'll share some thoughts on creative block and that what I do to navigate through that. And hopefully there's something that is helpful for you if you are also experiencing creative block. So I'm just gonna get set up and hopefully spark some of that inspiration that I've desperately been craving. And then later this evening, I've got some friends playing a show further out into the neighborhood. And so we'll go to that. And yeah, I'm just really glad you're here. Let's get started. My transition into this full-time creative life happened rather quickly without much space to truly plan and experiment. And as a result, I find that I have leaned heavily on what has worked in the past. I continue to work in the same medium, scale, and avenues that have provided a foundation on which to grow. And it's held me down. But I can feel in my bones that it's time to expand, to try new things, to do things that I find intimidating. Because it's the intimidation that's led to this creative block. And that block has prevented any kind of work to be completed. And here's the thing, I'm audacious. I see something and I am convinced I can do it. <laughs> There's a part of me that believes that with practice, I could do just about anything. I think that comes with the territory of being a multi-passionate creator. And trust me, I know firsthand how frustrating and annoying this can be, but I have this undying curiosity and desire to learn and try as much as I can while I'm on this planet. And I know from experience that often when I'm in this state of creative block, it's perfectionism that's holding me back. Not knowing where to turn because a turn might not work out. Not knowing what to create because the creation might not come into the world as I first envisioned. Once I can name this, and trust me, it has to be named every time. I can begin to work through it. I can give myself permission to get messy, to experiment, to get it wrong, because it's all of this that leads to the expansion, the creative breakthrough that will allow you to navigate beyond that creative block. This spring, I want to lean into that expansion. I wanna try the new things. I want to experiment and get it wrong so that eventually I can get it right. There are so many things I want to do with Paper for the People, and there are so many things that I want to do as a creative. New mediums, old mediums in new ways, new routines and practices. If I have learned anything on this creative journey, it's that curiosity leads to the breakthroughs, the inspirations, 
the expansions. And as an artist, it's expansion that I find most fulfilling. It's what keeps me on this path of creating. So I'm giving myself permission to be obnoxiously curious in the season of life, to try all of the things, to experiment, and who knows where it will lead. But one thing is certain, I will enjoy every minute of it. I hope on this day that you give yourself permission to be imperfect and to experiment. Who knows, maybe it'll lead to some truly incredible things. And if not, well, at least you'll have a bit of fun in the figuring it out. So I bought this gouache last summer, I believe, and I haven't used it much, and mostly when I use it, I'm just experimenting. So if you see something and you're like, what? Um, no judgment, <laughs> because art is a judge-free zone. Um, but I'm really enjoying just using it and figuring out the opacity that I like. There is an artist, Jill Kitok, on Instagram. She uses gouache and I really, really love her style and her use of the medium. And every now and then she offers courses like, you know, a small little group of people and she gives them pointers and what have you. And I did one of those a few months ago. It was a lot of fun. I am just really looking forward to getting into these different mediums because I've always used paper and for the longest time I only used paper and so getting into watercolor and gouache and I am just releasing all expectations and I'm just going for it and I am really excited to give myself permission to just like see what works and to see what I like and Since taking that class, I have been crocheting a little bit each day just because I don't want to forget because I do really want to make some things out of granny squares. I know they're like kind of trendy right now, but I have always had such a soft spot for the, the grandma things because listen, I love rock and roll, but I also <laughs> am a grandma at heart and I just love um, quilts and blankets and books. So you know, multiple things can exist in one person. We are complex human beings. So this is what I've got so far and you know I know I have all these strings that I need to weave in but I think she's looking all right. I also know that granny squares are not supposed to be this large but this is practice and practice makes better is what I used to always tell my kids and I'm not looking for perfect I'm looking for better and so when I finally get those uh Really nice yarns from Pearl Soho, which is a wonderful store. Uh, in Soho, of course, they sell yarns and all things knitting and crochet. Um, I will know what I'm doing, and I won't waste my monies on the fancy yarns without knowing what to do. I do find that working with my hands is really grounding for me. I don't know, I've always really loved making anything as long as it's like a tactile thing. Uh, it's, I find that I can like lose myself in my thoughts in that way and like process the day's events, the world events, really as this like multi-passionate creator. I learned how to crochet in college and I made everybody a very, very wonky scarf. <laughs> and then I learned recently how to knit. I couldn't do it now, but like five years ago I knitted everybody a scarf. I hand painted a wall in the kitchen. Um, I made the shelf that has all of our records on it. I mean, I just really like making things. And so like, yo, know, if there is a way to build a life where you can get paid to just make all of the things, that's what I want. 
I'm not, I know I'm not alone there. Um, but I think that's what we're in the process of trying to figure out, right? Is how to build a creative life that is sustainable so that you can pay your bills and create and thrive. Maybe you can hear those birds. That's one thing I really love about living in Brooklyn is that we have a bunch of birds. Um, we used to have a huge tree in the backyard, but was it two years ago now? They cut it out and they, it was devastating. It was one of the saddest things um, because I loved that tree and the birds just didn't know what to do. But I'm glad that they've stuck around because there really is something to being able to open your windows in a city like New York and hear birds. I'm waiting for that layer in my sketchbook to dry, so I thought I would go ahead and jump on and add another row while I wait. The hardest thing for me is to get the next row started. I also think that it's good to try hard things because that is how we grow and learn. So what's new with you? <laughs> I don't really know much about gouache just yet because I work primarily with paper and I just use gouache to add little details. I haven't really done larger pieces with gouache or acrylic, although I have dreamed of it for years. So I am hoping that I can get some of that done this year. I really want to like try some new things. When I am feeling stuck creatively, I know that it is time to like start experimenting. I know it's time to just have some fun to take the pressure off to make something that looks really ugly <laughs> because it's the it's just the trying breaking through that that perfectionist so that's what this week has been all about because if i'm gonna be for real with you this quilt square ain't looking so pretty but she um she's quilting <laughs> So for my book club, we're reading a book called Let This Radicalize You. It's about organizing and activism, and one of the things that I, I just started it, I need to get going on it because we have book club in about a week and a half, but one of the things that I have appreciated the most so far is the conversation around organizing and storytelling and how in the past and oftentimes people will go to fear as a way to get a message across. Because fear is one of the most easily accessible emotions. They address the need for hope and joy and dreaming about what's possible. That really struck me because the basis of the illustration that I do with Paper for the People and my community scenes that I create are all about envisioning what is possible when we take care of one another and when we build communities that have the supports that they need, we have the ability to create something truly remarkable if we can be brave enough, daring enough to envision it. As I create my Quilt Squish for the Great Creating, all about creating a new society that's absolutely linked to that idea as well. And I just really love it when I hear that message of joy and the need for joy and the need for visionaries. If you've read anything that you find inspiring or even just enjoyable, let me know. I'm always looking for books. I just recently purchased Big Magic to listen to as an audiobook. I've heard that it's inspiring. I'm hoping to just fill this spring with creating and with bravery and with joy. What do you hope for your spring? I'd love to know. Do you have any projects that you're working on or any hopes that you wish to accomplish? All right, I'm gonna stop there and I'm gonna get this 
sketchbook page finished and then let's go to a rock and roll show. Anytime I see a friend creating something or performing, I'm always inspired because it really takes such a tremendous amount of courage to put what you've created out into the world. And so I'm really looking forward to this show tonight. I've seen them perform once before and it was excellent and I'll bring you along, but let's get this finished up so we can get out the door and we don't miss anything. Day. I kept thinking I was gonna add a design on this vase, but I'm kind of digging it as it is. I have a vase on my shelf that I kind of styled it after, and I'm just gonna say it's done. But I'm really looking forward to this season of just playing. It has been really heavy, and I am looking forward to more joy and experimentation and just like no rules, and maybe something really cool will come out of that. But I'm gonna get this area cleaned up we're gonna go to this rock and roll show but I just want to thank you for spending your time with me I know that time is like super valuable so any amount of time you spend with me is like truly a tremendous honor if you found this video enjoyable or inspiring or helpful please be sure to like it so that YouTube knows to share it with others and if you would like to follow along as I figure out how I'm going to build this creative life here in New York City I would be truly honored if you subscribed. Um, we have a small and growing community as it is, and I'm so thrilled that you're here. And please don't be shy. I'm really looking forward to the day where we have conversations in the comments. Send me those book recommendations. If you have any fun mediums you want me to try with art, also send me those recommendations. And lastly, whatever time of day you've watched this, I hope it's been a kind one. Until next time.